This video will give you important information you need to know about operating and maintaining the John Deere 2500B Precision Cut and 2500E E-Cut Hybrid Riding Greens Mowers. We'll cover the location and use of the controls, proper mowing techniques, daily maintenance, and extremely important safety information that you need to know and understand before mowing with these machines. Be sure to watch it more than once before operating the mower. Remember, you are responsible for your own safety and the safety of those around you. Safety should be the first thing you think of when operating any machine on the golf course. Always wear your seatbelt when operating the 2500B Precision Cut and 2500E E-Cut or any machine with a rollover protection structure. We won't cover everything in this video you need to know, so be sure to read the operator's manual before mowing for additional safety and machine operation information. The operator's manual is available in other languages, and this video DVD includes a Spanish version following the English version. Both the 2500B Precision Cut and 2500E E-Cut have a convenient command arm that puts the operating controls within convenient reach of your right hand. The command arm controls include the raise lower lever, the mow transport lever, the throttle control lever, the indicator light hour meter module, and the key switch. The indicator light hour meter module includes the hour meter, engine coolant temperature indicator, battery discharge indicator, and sit on seat diagnostic light, and the hydraulic oil temperature indicator. On diesel models only, there's the engine air preheat indicator. And on 2500E E-cut models only, there's the real motor control unit diagnostic light. On both models, there's the engine oil pressure indicator. Our advanced sit-on seat or SOS diagnostics flashes a code using the battery light to help you diagnose problems starting the engine. One flash followed by a short pause and two additional flashes indicates that the park brake switch is not activated. Lock the park brake to start the engine. Two flashes followed by a short pause and two additional flashes means the back lap valve is in the back lap position. Turn off the back lap valve to start the engine. And on one flash and a short pause followed by three flashes means the mow transport lever is in the mow position. Move the lever to the transport position to start the engine. To learn more about the diagnostics codes, see the code label located on the side of the command arm or the operator's manual. 2500 E-Cut hybrid models have real control diagnostics to help you identify problems with the electric powered cutting units. If one of the E-Cut hybrid system control units detects a problem while the reels are engaged, the warning light hour meter module will flash a diagnostic code. See the operator's manual or the real control unit diagnostic label located on the inside of the lower access panel to learn more about various warning codes. On gas engine models, the choke knob is located on the steering pedestal. On the bottom left side of the steering pedestal on both models is the foot controlled tilt steering adjustment lever. Lift slightly on the steering wheel, press and hold the tilt adjustment lever. Adjust the steering wheel to a comfortable position and release the lever to lock it in place. On the right side of the platform are the foot controls, including the park brake pedal or emergency brake. Directly behind the steering pedestal is the park brake lock. Push and hold the park brake lever down, then push and hold the park brake lock down and hold it in place. Release the brake pedal, then release the lock. To release the brake, push the brake pedal down and the lock will release immediately. On the right side of the platform are the forward travel pedal and the reverse travel pedal. Press the forward pedal to move forward and the reverse pedal to back up. Always check behind you for people or equipment before backing up. On the diesel models, the fuel gauge is behind the operator seat and to the right. On the gas models, the fuel gauge is to the right and below the operator controls. On the right side of the seat is the seat adjustment lever. Push the lever to the left then adjust the seat forward or backward and release the lever. When working, your first line of defense against injury is wearing proper clothing for the job. Proper clothing includes heavy work shoes, long pants, safety glasses with side shields and hearing protection. Depending on the work you are doing, you may also want to wear work gloves, a long sleeve shirt and sunscreen. 
Do a walk around inspection before mowing. Make sure hardware is tight and guards and shields are in place and in good condition. Look under the machine for oil, fuel, or coolant leaks. Make sure all safety signs are readable. Tell the service technician if you find any missing or damaged decals. Inspect the cutting units to make sure they are in good shape. With gloves on, check the blades and bed knife for nicks or signs of wear or damage. Have any damaged, worn, or missing parts repaired or replaced, and necessary adjustments made before mowing. Check the tire pressure and the condition of the tires. The operator's manual lists the recommended air pressure for the tires. Before starting the engine, open the hood, pull the dipstick, and check the engine oil level to make sure it is in the safe area on the dipstick. Also, check the hydraulic oil level with the dipstick in the fill of the hydraulic reservoir. And check the engine coolant level. If any of these fluid levels are low, top them off or have the service technician do it before you mow. Make sure there's no grass debris in the engine compartment or on linkages and controls. Check the radiator grill screen to make sure it is not clogged with grass debris. On diesel engine models, check the air restriction indicator. If the red indicator is showing, notify the service technician before mowing. Release any dust from the filter through the unloading valve and check the fuel sediment bowl. Check the fuel gauge to make sure there's fuel to get you through the day. While sitting in the seat with seat belt fastened, start the engine and check the forward reverse pedal operation. Again, have any problem serviced before mowing. Both the 2500B Precision Cut and 25E Cut have ignition interlock safety systems installed. For the engine to start, the park brake must be locked, the mow transport lever must be in the transport position, and the backlap valve must be off. The operator can be in the seat or off the seat. On the 2500 E-Cut Hybrid, the backlap switch, which is located under the seat, must be in the mow position. Test the safety interlock systems before mowing. See the operator's manual for testing instructions. Notify the service technician if you find a problem. Do not operate the machine. To mow with the 2500B Precision Cut or the 2500 E-Cut, climb aboard the machine and fasten your seat belt. Check to make sure the parking brake is engaged and the mow transport lever is in transport position. Move the throttle to half speed. Turn the key to the run position. If cold starting a gas model, pull the choke closed. If cold starting a diesel model, wait three to five seconds for the glow plug preheat indicator light to go out. Then on both models, turn the key to start the engine and move the throttle to full speed. Raise the cutting units, release the parking brake, Slowly press the forward travel pedal to transport out to the first green. Training is important. If you are new to operating the Riding Greens mowers, practice operating in a clear, unobstructed area, under direction of a qualified operator before mowing on the golf course. Always transport at moderate speeds and transport on the cart paths whenever possible. If you have to move off the cart path, proceed slowly and avoid rough ground. Be careful when driving on or crossing roadways and never allow riders. Many greens are elevated. Use extreme caution when operating or transporting on sloped areas surrounding the greens. Transport straight up the slope toward elevated greens. Avoid quick stops and reduce your speed, especially if the grass is wet. Before you start mowing, park the mower safely off to the side. Get off the machine and walk the green. Remove the flag stick and pick up any debris that could be thrown and injure someone or damage the cutting units or possibly ruin the quality of cut. Note any drop-offs into bunkers or bodies of water and any embankments. Use extreme caution and allow a safe distance from water features, drop-offs or steep bunkers when mowing. Loss of control in these areas is a major cause of injury or death. Don't take chances. John Deere has determined that the risk of rollover is low when operating the 2500B or 2500E on slopes of 15 degrees or less. The risk of rollover increases as the slope angle increases. Never mow slopes greater than 25 degrees. See the operator's manual for help identifying slopes for safe operation.
and how to measure the angle of slopes before mowing to make sure they are not too steep for safe operation. Be careful when mowing slopes. Slow down and use extreme caution. Decrease your speed as the slope angle increases. Mow straight up and down sloped areas. Keep all movements slow and gradual and avoid starting or stopping on slopes. Heat cutting units lowered to the ground on slopes to improve stability. Make sure the tires are inflated to the recommended pressure. Low tire pressure can cause the machine to become unstable on slopes. Do not mow slopes when the grass is wet. When ready, start the engine. Push the throttle to full speed. Push the mow transport lever forward to the mow position. Always have your foot off the traction pedal when engaging or disengaging the PTO lever. This will allow the lever to move freely and prevent damage to the control linkage. Press the forward travel pedal and move toward the green. As the front cutting units cross over the collar, push the raise lower lever forward to lower them onto the green. Mow straight across the green and just before the cutting units reach the opposite side, pull the raise lower lever back to raise them. Do not cut into the taller surrounding collar. If there is room and the ground is level, continue off the green for several feet before turning and then make a wide, slow turn. Do not stop or turn on the green. In tight areas where there are green side bunkers or water, drive to the nearest flat open area and then turn or carefully make a Y turn. Continue back across the green overlapping your previous pass by about two to three inches. Continue this process until the middle of the green is mowed. Then make a cleanup or perimeter pass around the outside edge of the green. The front cutting units on both John Deere Riding Greens mowers have an offset design. By reversing direction on the cleanup cut each day, this feature reduces the tire wear pattern commonly caused by other triplex greens mowers. This design also gives you a clear view of all three cutting units, which helps you mow precisely and avoid cutting into the collar on the perimeter pass. Empty your grass catchers after each green or sooner if catchers become full. The center basket will fill first, so monitor it to determine when to empty. John Deere offers two styles of grass catchers, the direct mount and the weight transfer system. To empty the catchers, stop on level ground and park the machine safely. For the direct mount system, lift the basket by the handle and remove it from the cutting unit. To install the catcher, align the grooves in the sides of the catcher with the brackets on the cutting unit and lower the catcher onto the bracket. On models with the weight transfer system, compress the lever on top of the catcher and remove the catcher from the hook and cutting unit. To install, align the rods of the grass catcher into the cutting unit channels. Slide the grass catcher into the cutting unit and attach the lever on top of the cutting unit back into the hook on the left arm. To remove the rear grass catcher, rotate the catcher backwards and then slide it out from under the machine. Install the rear catcher by sliding it onto the bale and rotating it in place. Check with your supervisor for the correct procedure for disposing of clippings at your course. As you mow, watch the quality of cut to make sure the mower is cutting correctly. Also, pay attention to the machine and how it operates. In particular, watch for hydraulic leaks. Hot hydraulic oil will kill the grass. If you see a leak, stop mowing and move off the green. Turn off the engine and contact your supervisor or service technician. Do not attempt to locate the source of the leak. Hydraulic oil under pressure can penetrate skin. Only a train technician should repair hydraulic leaks. The 2500E E-Cut Hybrid Riding Greens Mower has electric powered cutting units, which greatly reduces the risk of hydraulic leaks. Also, with the 2500E E-Cut, you can mow at reduced engine speed for quieter operation near homes and around golfers while maintaining your mowing speed and quality of cut. Check with your supervisor to determine if this feature should be used on your golf course. After the day's mowing, there is some simple maintenance to be done. Stop safely on level ground, set the parking brake, lower the cutting units, and throttle the engine down and let it idle for a short time to cool. Then turn the engine off and remove the key from the ignition. When the engine is cool, open the hood and use the low pressure compressed air to clean the radiator and oil cooler. Water could cause grass material to cake between the fins. 
Blow parallel to the fins to prevent damage. Damaged fins can reduce the radiator's cooling efficiency. Also, raise the seat and blow away any grass that's collected underneath. Decaying grass left here can damage components and paint. Use low pressure water to wash the machine and cutting units. Do not use a high pressure power washer which could force grease out of the bearings. After washing, grease all reel and roller bearings. This helps purge debris and water from these critical bearings. See the operator's manual for other lubrication points, the specified lubrication to use, and the lubrication schedule. Before parking your John Deere greens mower for the day, fill the tank with fresh gasoline or diesel fuel. Fuel is extremely flammable and the vapors can be explosive. See the operator's manual for important information on fueling safety. New lower emission diesel engines require better and cleaner fuels and more fuel tank and pre-screening filter maintenance than in the past. For maximum power and performance, your diesel fuel should have a minimum cetane rating of 45. With proper operation and maintenance, the 2500B Precision Cut and 2500E E-Cut Hybrid will provide years of service. Always use quality John Deere OEM replacement parts and lubricants. They're made specifically for your John Deere mower. Most importantly is to remember to always operate safely. Remember, the information provided here is only an overview. Be sure to read your operator's manual before operating, servicing, or making any adjustments to your 2500 Triplex Greens mower. And most importantly, always think safety when operating or maintaining these machines. Contact your local John Deere distributor with any questions or concerns.